Hi guys, this is Simeon. Today I want to answer some questions that I got a lot uh, during hay harvest. And I also want to talk about our cows and why so many people are so critical to uh, the system that I have. So it's just gonna be a simple Q&A, but I don't wanna say just as in, oh, it's not so important or good. I think it's really important to stay in touch with you guys like that, answer questions, uh, because the channel is, uh, you know, I it's, it's my desire to educate people as well and answer questions. So during hay harvest, you know, obviously you have noticed the last weeks, we didn't have that much time. We, um, we were very, very busy with a lot of different things and, um, you know, the farm has priority, family has priority, so the channel um, has to lay low a little bit then. But we harvested our hay, we got some videos out there for you guys and uh, people asked a lot why we harvested this late and um, that they would harvest the first time um, the end of May, beginning of or June or beginning of June, middle of June, and then the second time, the middle of August. And you know, I don't know where you guys live that wrote this, but where we live in our climate, uh, the farmers who do silage, they get uh, all our neighbors here, everybody who gets silage gets um, two harvests, and then just um, about an hour away or sometimes even half an hour, 45 minutes away from us, they get up to three harvests of uh, silage a year. Um, hay, you can only do one harvest, not because of the growth, but because it's too wet. Um, August is an extremely wet month. There's so much dew on the, um, on the fields in the mornings when you wake up. I don't know if it's because of all the lakes or whatever, but it's just extremely wet. It's soaking wet. And then, um, you know, it dries off maybe first at one or two o'clock and then at three, four o'clock, it starts getting wet already. So um, you, you, there's just no way we can get the hay dry enough like that. And, and maybe in extreme dry conditions, maybe this year it might have worked if you have an extremely dry and, and a little bit windy August. The thing is also this year that uh, it has been so dry, so the fields have been growing slower. Um, I think generally there is no one way to make hay. Making hay is an art and um, you see grass grows differently fast every year. It just changes all the time. And um, you know if you have a cold spring, a warm spring, a wet spring, a dry spring and so on and so on. And this year it has just been very cold in the beginning. Then it has been extremely dry and then we just have to check for the weather, you know. Generally, uh, we, you know, we can't make hay here really um, in, um, in 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 the, at the end of May, the beginning of June. You know, our grass first starts growing in the middle of May here. Uh, the the climate zone that we have where we live, it's um, almost like Östersund, and uh, you know, much further north of us, it's it's quite cold here. Um, just um, 20 kilometers away from us, they ha always have it a couple uh, degrees warmer than us. I remember one year we got our, we got 10 centimeters of snow the beginning of October, and um, 10 minutes away they got nothing because it's just a little downhill closer towards the big lakes. So, you know, it, you just have to see all the time. And and so what I want to do in the future is um, I want to graze my hay fields once in the spring. Um, to slow it down a bit and that they have to regrow and then hay harvest you know will be better quality hay in the drier season because around midsummer the end of June it always tends to be very very uh, wet and the you can't rely on the weather really so um, that's that's that people have asked that um, the tractors held up really well. We were really happy with my brother's tractor who could uh, run the baler and work well. Brought in eight of these trailers, have almost enough hay for the year, have to buy a little more. 
Um, it depends on how we can do, how effectively controlled grazing will be. So let me talk about that now. Um, you know, people are very new to this method of grazing. They um, look at it very, mm, what is going on here? Um, but most of them, you know, I'm not saying all of them, but most of them don't know what's good for the animals. And some of them really just don't like it. And I just want to say real quick why we do it the way we do it. So the controlled grazing, you know, it's, it's not, it's not just, you know, having five fields and rotating them all the time. That's not at all what it is. It is a day-to-day -day judgment of how much grass is on your field that given day. Uh, that depends, again, on weather conditions, time of the year, uh, how wet, how dry, all of that. And then you give just the right amount of grass to your herd of cows um, at that day. So they have enough feed for one day. And what you do with that, it's best for the pasture because the pasture, and when I say pasture, I mean everything, all the species of, of plants on there, all the herbs and everything. It's not just lawn or anything. It's, it's, it's a lot of plants there. Um, then you have all the insects and, and, and the soil itself and everything. It, it um, gets a disturbance for one day and then it gets a long rest period. That's very important for the pasture. Then it's very important for the animal because you mimic nature and the animal moves on to fresh ground. It moves away from the manure and it moves on to fresh ground. Um, it's very important because the animal um, gets fresh grass and um, the parasites, the manure, the flies, everything is left behind the animal when it moves on. It's just interesting to me how we people, you know, judge what what an animal wants <laughs> and and that's the saying that's the best for the animal you know uh, because what we do is we give them a field that seems big but if they're on there the whole year it's really not big it's very small and then they walk around and first of all they only eat candy they only eat the grasses they like then they tr step on everything everywhere the manure gets spread out everywhere there are parasites everywhere you have to give them medicine to deworm them and uh, you know the pasture gets disturbed all the time uh, gets trampled down all the time manure piles up on the higher parts and the lower parts um, don't get any manure you know that's not natural in nature yes they move but they move to completely new fresh grounds every day. And you see, um, that's why we do this. And, um, you know, I've had a couple times that the calf goes out of the fence and that uh, causes some stress among people. And then I have, uh, you know, that I have to learn how much pasture to give them at a given day, uh, more or less, depends on the field and so on. But it's a learning curve. And I think it's really the best and the healthiest for the animals. And not just that, also the best for the pasture. Uh, the manure gets spread out evenly. Nothing gets an overload or too little. And um, it also doubles or increases your production tremendously. So what this does is that now in the fall, I have a lot of pasture still that is untouched since the last time the cows were on there. And I will be able to move these cows over this pasture day by day even when the other farmers are starting to feed silage or hay already. Because um, it's this beautiful fresh grass that will be there still when the, um, when the weather doesn't allow um, growth anymore, vegetation to grow. So this will enable me to, to feed way less hay, which is good. You need less buildings to store the hay, you need to make less hay, you need to store less hay, all of that. and. Um, you know, the animals grow better on the grass anyway. So this enables me to push the limit until I know um, now they need the hay and and it really helps me to control it all. At the end of the season, when I see the weather's dropping, I can still walk around and roughly say, this is how much grass I've left. That's probably when I will have to start feeding hay. And it's just, um, just so much better in, in every aspect. And you know, this, this brings me to the point where I want to finish with people are always going to come and say, uh, 
you know, this is better or this is that. And, and you know, I believe there are different ways of doing things. Um, I just want to share why we do what we do. I want to share um, why we're trying it out. And, you know, that I'm doing it. That's my thing. I'm going to do that. And, you know, people are always going to, some are going to encourage, some are going to discourage you. But you got to have to find your way and do it. Um, and, and just at some point be okay with people having different opinions. You got to find a way that works for you. So that was a lot of talk. Um, this week we're going to be very, very busy again. So I don't know how many videos I'll get out to you guys. But uh, Swedish Homestead is going to continue. Um, and you just have to hang in there. But thank you for watching. I hope to see you very soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.